The new project is the inboards version of the three-piece bridle or the Der Gebruchener Ruchen. The process is based on Peter Verheyen's article uh, on this book and there's a link in the description below and hopefully it pops up on the video now. In this first video I'll prepare the text block in the second video, we'll line the spine and make the tabs that will attach the boards. And in the final video, we'll uh, cover the boards or make the boards, cover the boards, attach the boards and finish the book. We'll start by folding the text. The text is uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. This is the first formatted book that I've produced from a Project Gutenberg text. So it's not perfect, but uh, it wasn't too bad for a first try. I'm using 118 GSM Mohawk Superfine eggshell finish. I'm doing three sheet sections, so that's 12 pages per section. 10 sections for the book, and then there'll be two end papers. So I guess the question is, how is this different to the other video I've done on a similar binding? Well, in the previous binding, the cover was made as a case. So it was a cased book, and the text block and the case were brought together. In this case, the spine stiffener and attaching piece of paper that normally attaches the boards and the spine stiffener is applied to the book, and then the spine is covered on the book and then the boards are covered and then attached to a tab or a, a flap that's made out of the waste sheet and the extension of the paper that wraps it around the spine stiffener. It's not the best explanation so hopefully it becomes clear as we make the book. So in addition to the 10 sections I'll fold up uh, two sections of plain paper to be used for the end papers and then I will put these in the press overnight. I'll rotate half the sections so that half the spines are to each side and just press all the air out of them overnight. I'm going to use the end paper configuration that's in Peter's article. So it's a folio of decorative paper tipped to nested folios of white with a guard of washi wrapped around it and then a waist wrapped around those. So there's my pieces of medium to heavy weight um, washi, a couple of paste papers, for the decorative paper and the whites in the background. So I'll start by tipping the decorative paper to the white paper. So I'll glue out a tip line on each of these. I sometimes like to glue both folios, so I'll put the four of them together. It just means you get a really good uh, adhesion between them. Sometimes I'll just uh, glue the the two, maybe the coloreds or the whites, but in this case I'm going to do the, all four. I really like this end paper configuration. It's very strong, it's sewn to the text block, it's reinforced with the washi, and the made paper, which is only tipped at the spine edge and the fore edge, is nice and flexible.
the free community newspapers recently changed the inside paper they use to a non-coated paper and I forgot about that and I was about to uh, glue the washi out and I remembered it's going to strike through the washi so it'll have a tendency to grab the waste paper underneath so I used a, a coated paper to glue that out but then you can still see it grabs a little bit there but it's still pushed down okay. I'd normally use printer's waste for the waste sheet that I couldn't find any lying around so I'm going to have to use a nice piece of white. So I'm only going to use one sheet which means it's not going to wrap all the way around but that's fine. The waste sheet being a little bit short is going to be fine. It's going to get cut short later anyway. So I'm only gluing that out on one side instead of the two tipping it on so that it's just overlapping about three millimeters which I guess is about an eighth of an inch and then normally I'd let that dry a little bit longer and then fold that around so you can see how it's a little bit short at the foredge but that's fine. I'll leave those to dry for a while and then I'll trim off the excesses now when I trim the excess off the foredge, you want to make sure you do it on the side that doesn't have the short waste sheet because then you would be trimming too much of the decorative paper. So just be careful of that. And then we'll do the final assembly. So putting in the extra folio of white, uh, marking the waste sheets, maybe marking front and back and then placing those with the text block in preparation for marking up the spine. Someone asked me what Frank Wiesner press I'd recommend for someone starting out in bookbinding. Well, if you're just starting out, I'd re recommend the utility press, which is the finishing press on legs. It's a copy of a dryad press that was aimed at vocational training, I guess. But the press I use all the time is this German style finishing press. It's like an extra set of hands, but maybe not the press that you would start out with. I've marked the kettle stitch locations 12 millimeters in from each end, and I'm marking up for sewing on three tapes. I'm using Rami band because I want to fray these out. You could use frayed out hemp cord or maybe the pleister tapes. And then I'll put the tape at the sewing locations and put a mark a millimeter either side of the tapes. And then I mark the head with the diagonal line to keep the sections in the correct order. I'll transfer those markings to my usual hole punching template, which is just a piece of 12 point or 0.3 millimeter manila card. And I'll just poke those markings through to the other side because I'll need to use it uh, from both sides because of the end papers. The end papers are sewn through the two nested folios of white. So that's where we poke the holes through. But you don't want to punch the holes through the spine fold of the decorative paper. So I do that by pushing the all through almost vertical. But once I start punching the holes in the sections, I'll punch the holes through at 45 degrees so the holes come out right on the fold of the spine.
Now we're about to do the final end paper. And here's a little tricky bit. We have to rotate the punching template so that we're uh, not punching into the decorative paper. So that decorative paper has to be held up. It can't be on the flat, otherwise we would end up punching into it. From my experience of using this paper, to get the amount of swell I want for this book, I'm going to use the slightly thicker one of my two standard threads, which is normally 25.3 or 18.3. So I'm going to use the slightly thicker of the two, which is 18.3. If I was using standard copier bond paper, then I'd use the slightly thinner thread, which is 25.3 linen thread. I've mentioned this a few times now, but when sewing on stiff tapes, I don't see any major advantage in using a sewing frame. So I'll just uh, sew on a block to get the sections off the bench and make it easier to get the needle into the sewing holes. The sewing is fairly straightforward. It's just all long sewing over tape supports. When I get back after the second section, I'll do a square knot or a reef knot to join up the two sections. And then the additional sections after the first two will have a kettle stitch at each end. I think the most common mistake that beginners make is over tightening their sewing. I think most beginners are worried about loose sewing and then will over tighten it. What you really don't want is the kettle stitch, stitches pulling in and, and really tight. Really tight kettle stitches will make it really hard to round the book and back the book later. Always pull the thread tight in the direction of the spine so that you don't rip the paper. I've had to join on some thread, which I did with a weaver's knot, and I've got a video of that. Though something I've started doing differently is to try and put the knot right on the edge of the tape. So it's almost in the hole next to the tape. And it just minimizes the side, size of the bump. And then I'm also then sewing over the tails of the knot. And that sort of pulls those tails flatter to the spine of the book and just produces less of a bump. I think I saw that in a Peter Garrity video and I've liked it and continue to do it. Another tip that I picked up from a workshop I did with Michael Burke is when you tighten the kettle stitch, don't put your thumb right behind the kettle stitch. Put it about an inch back from the edge of the text block so that when you pull up the text can lift up and then you won't over tighten the kettle stitch or less likely to over tighten the kettle stitch. And of course finish with a double kettle stitch going down a section for the second kettle stitch otherwise the knot will be quite large. I'll tip the end papers to the first and last sections, which hides that little bit of washi that's been guarded around those end papers and just makes the attachment between those stronger. For a thicker book, you would also tip down the first and last sections as well. When tipping on the end papers, I avoid getting any adhesive on the tapes because I want those to be able to move for the rounding. Now I'll put adhesive on the spine. Again, only between the tapes. I don't want adhesive over the tapes. I want those to be free still. And then just as the adhesive has uh, dried enough so that it's not tacky, I'll go trim the foredge with the plow and then I'll round the book while the adhesive on the spine is still a little bit soft. I get asked this quite a lot about how long to let this adhesive 
dry, which to me indicates that a lot of people are having trouble with rounding. And I suspect that a lot of the problems with rounding actually come from not the adhesive on the spine, but the cattle stitches being too tight. But if you do leave the adhesive dry, say overnight, which is fairly common, something you'd get distracted in, in your work, and if you think the adhesive is too hard, most PVAs and EVAs will soften with a little bit of heat. So the hair dryer on the spine and then round the book. Now I'm just marking up trim lines, so using a square to mark the head and tail trim lines and then measuring from the spine for the four edge trim line and I'll check that that will result in a square book by measuring the diagonals. Now I'm not going to go through all the detailed steps in ploughing edges, uh, you can check out my ploughing video for that. I'm going to put a fairly gentle round in this book, so put your thumb into the fore edge of the book and use your fingers to pull the outside of the book towards you, just in a sort of a, a circular action, just uh, hammer the top edge of the outside of the spine. I normally try and remember to mark the shoulders when I mark the trim lines, but I forgot, so I'm doing it now. Now I'm not going to put right angle shoulders on the book, I'm going to sort of go for 45 degree shoulders like in Peter's article, so the shoulders can be a bit thicker, so a good three and a half millimeters in this case. And now I plow the head and tail and then flip the press over to use the backing boards to back the book. Now a lot of the success in backing a book doesn't come from the process of backing itself, it comes from the correct selection of materials and the combination of those materials to get the swell correct. So the thickness of the thread, the number of sheets per section, so that you get that swell to 20 to 30 percent of the thickness of the book. And tightening up the press starts to back the book itself. So if the success of backing comes from the swell and the swell comes from the thread inside the book, then the most difficult parts of the book to back are the end bits of the spine where there's no thread inside the sections. So I'm actually just going to use my thumbs to start to spread the end sections out a little bit to give them a head start. And I start with the hammer away from the ends and then work towards the ends. Because once the sections start to bend over, uh, then they will take the end bits of the folios with them. I'm not sure if I even understand that explanation, but I'm going to leave it in anyway. The folios in the center of the book, you want those standing up vertically. So you never want to hammer those uh, sections. You always want to hammer away from the center of the book. And you, but you start just away from the center and then work your way to the edge. So that's back to a bit past 45 degrees, but once the book comes out of the press and relaxes a bit, that's going to go back to 45 degrees. I'm going to colour the three edges of the book. I'm going to start with the four, rounded fore edge. So to protect the shoulders, I've got some thick, six millimeter thick grey board that's not as wide as the book. And to smooth the fore edge, I've wrapped a piece of dowel in, in uh, paper towel and then a piece of fine sandpaper around that. And the paper towel just allows the sandpaper to conform to the shape of the fore edge. So I'm just using acrylic inks. Now you may have noticed I normally talc edges and I forgot, and but I've never really had a problem with acrylic inks sticking anyway. And then I also decided to uh, change the color. 
So to change the colour I just sanded off. I waited for the previous colour to dry and then just sanded it off. Now when we finish this book I'm going to say something about not talking the edges. But after I didn't do the foredge I decided to continue with not talking the head and tail as well. So I was just curious to see if I could tell a difference. So far the pages haven't stuck together but I didn't expect that with acrylic ink anyway. Now that I've rounded and backed this book I've put boards into the shoulders again to protect the shoulders and I'm not going for a glass finish so I'm not going to use an agate burnisher but I will give them the edges a good brush burnish and I'll rub some beeswax on them as well. And you never rub beeswax on directly. In this case you can see I rub the beeswax into the palm of my hand, transfer that to my thumb and then put a very small amount of beeswax onto the edge and then burnish that with, with the brush. Since I'm being fairly economical with the details on the edge colouring I'll skip the second edge. So that's this week's video done. Next week we'll move on to lining the spine and then covering the spine with book cloth. And then the third video will be making the boards and completing the book. I shared the PDF for this book with my mid-tier Patreons and everyone uh, got access to a video uh, on my progress for making a book cloth video. If you're able to and would like to support me on Patreon, there's a link in the description below. I hope you've enjoyed this video and as always, I really appreciate you hitting the big thumbs up button. And if you want to be notified of my future videos, especially the remainder of this series, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. And until next time, cheerio. Thank you.